back, baby. It's been a while. For you, I've been here every week. That's true. You have them. <laughs> you show up. You, I think you forget that because you haven't been somewhere doesn't mean I haven't been there. Let me tie my drawstring here on my pajama shorts. At least you're not wearing swim trunks. The, hey, they're light. They're airy. He wears swim trunks as shorts nearly every day. It's a gift that keeps on And he on tries getting. to argue that they're not swim trunks, but they, they are. There's a certain pair of shorts. I have three kinds that are... They're athletic shorts. You could work out in them. They're not made to go swimming in. You can, but that's not how they're advertised. So is that the same, like, if I were just to wear, like, a bra to the beach, it would be like, well, it's not really a swimsuit, but you could. Well, it, it's made for but a certain But yours purpose, is made right? out of swimsuit material. Negative ghost My writer. bras are not made out of swimsuit material. <laughs> this conversation will go round and round. I think we've been watching too much of the Johnny Depp trial that we're both like, let's argue this out. Here's the evidence. I feel like that everybody and their dog is watching this yeah. trial. It's insane. Okay. Let's not, I don't know if that's one of the questions. Did you pull questions? I pulled some questions. All right. I, I right oh I boy. Kind of page I asked Kristoff to pull some questions from, I don't remember, two videos ago where I asked you to leave questions. And we're going to do a little Q&A because we really wanted to do these like once a month, but... Once every two, three months seems good, too. Just, yeah. You know, there's so much going on. There is. In vlogs, it's hard to update on everything because it's just what you're doing at the moment. Yeah, it'd be a four-hour video. Hmm. I'm, there's no order, so I'm just going to read them off here. Hey, I think I'm getting things mixed up a bit. Which animal was Tina, and why does she need her own place? Tina. She's an independent woman. That's why she needs her own place, okay? <laughs> Big hair, don't care. She don't need no man. Now, Tina is the uh, buff-laced Polish chicken, so the one with the crazy hair. She was, I think, attacked either by the rooster or maybe by uh, the llama. I don't really know, but she hurt her leg. We had to separate her. And the rooster, once he was separated from her, because she lived with our silky rooster and the silky hens, mm -hmm. and once I had to separate her from the silky rooster, he's just a real... Gandalf the Grey. He's, Gandalf the Grey he's is very, a real uh, piece of work. He's very, uh, he doesn't like to let outsiders in. So once you're outside of the flock, you ain't getting in. Yeah, it was like she had abandoned him and uh, he, he was the Ike to her Tina Turner. He just really <laughs> tried to kill her when we tried to put her back after her leg was getting better. He yeah. just went after her. So... Once again, we had a chicken that needed to be uh, separated. So to make a very long story short, which I've not done up to this point, <laughs> I have purchased uh, three, I think, buff lace Polish, well, they're not buff, different color, but Polish chicken babies that I'm going to give Tina to see if she will raise them. If she will not, then we will, and then we will join them together so that she is not alone. Because uh, chickens don't like to be alone. We tried putting her with the hens. I feel like I just have to answer every possible thing that someone's yeah. going to say in the comments because I know yeah. what they're going to say. We've tried putting her with the our laying hens. Uh, they, too, uh, tried to attack her and kill her. There's a difference. They'll fight, but there's a difference between a little bit of fighting and a little bit of territorialness and mm -hmm. going for the throat. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they were trying to inflict some pain. Yeah, this was what like this was like a cage match to the death. Two chickens enter. One chicken leaves. You're just, you're hilarious, aren't you? Next. Angie, what is in your liquid IV drink? Liquid IV? <laughs> liquid IV. <laughs> oh, did, was there more to the question? No, that's, okay. that's it. So liquid IV is a product that you purchase. It's basically, I think they call it like a hydration multiplier. It has a lot of electrolytes and it uh, is a source of... Hydration. It's the equivalent of drinking three or four water bottles if you put one of these packets into a water bottle. Hmm. I dilute mine more than that because it is a little strong. Uh, Strawberry is my favorite flavor. I buy it at Costco, sometimes Amazon. I have to have it at, like every day. I, you, I don't want to say I'm addicted to it, no. but kind of. But you drink uh, a lot of water it. because of them, mm -hmm. which is good. I need to drink yeah. more water. I, I love it. All right, next one. Can you and CR continue the What It's Like to Own series? I've been patiently waiting. Yes, 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 we need yes. To do, we need to bring those back. We started on them. Um, yeah, I thought it would be fun to do one that's like what it's like to own a pack of dogs. Since we don't okay. just have one or two dogs, most people have if they have a dog, they have one, mm -hmm. maybe two. We have a whole pack of them. What it's like to own a whole pack of dogs, various ages, sizes, all of that. I thought that That's could be one. kind of a fun video. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, 
the species specific ones are are, are I, I enjoy those ones too the value and being because people want to know like what it's like to own a llama yeah we need to fire those back up uh let us know what what comes next yeah. which ones you guys want to see what do you want to see out. prioritize Pigs. you know leave a comment who is it that you want to see and what it's like to own and then maybe thumbs up when you see someone leave that comment so we can kind of get a feel for what you're most interested in in terms of what it's like to own what is your best advice for young couples who are about to get married? How do you grow together and not apart as the years go by? I was really trying to resist the urge to say, don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you go ahead. I'd l- I would love to hear your advice. Young couples getting married. I think I feel pretty fortunate because we were really good friends before we got married. I think that was, is what that was. That was. Say. Did I? Really? You I still your answer? Good. Yeah, I think I'm a new one. Um. No, how about that's just that it's the good one. <laughs> that fa- like the foundation of being really good friends first really set the stage for that to kind of blossom into something that was real and not just infatuation, if you will, or yeah, I'll, I'll stop there. I well, think I'm I think rambling, there's there's but... some people that say like, "Oh, it shouldn't, you know, your your spouse shouldn't be your best friend. You should have other friends." Look, I'm not a psychologist or a therapist. I do think that having each other as like our best friends the people we talk to about everything i think that that's helped and having a sense of humor and it hasn't always been that way our relationship has changed i would say that we had other best friends when we were first together but as our relationship has evolved that's evolved but having fun together somebody that you have fun with because at the end of the day it doesn't matter how how perfectly you attempt to do everything in life you're going to hit hard times you're going to hit difficult times bad things are going to happen and ask yourself looking at this person like do you want to go through that stuff with this Hmm. person if they're a curmudgeon if they're you know one of the 35 percent of the population that has no sense of humor uh one of those people you probably don't want to go through life with because if you you've got to be able to like laugh at things and have fun with the person because you know, beauty will fade. We will all get ugly at some point. <laughs> some of us start Smart ugly and end ugly. Some of us start good and end ugly. I mean, it just, you never know. Oh uh, you could get kicked in the face by a llama and be really attractive and now you're ugly. Like it just, <laughs> you just don't know what's gonna happen. So it's gotta be built on more than just a physical For attraction. Sure. Not that you don't want to have a physical attraction I mean, and be able to keep your paws sure. off each other, but it's got to be more than that, I think. Yeah. And I think to add on, another thing I was thinking about as you were talking was... How much you wanted to get out of here? No, like a, a shared value system or a shared value structure. I think that's pretty important. Um, as you navigate through life, I mean, you're thinking this is this is the long haul, mm-hmm. right? And understandably, people change over time and, you know, things happen. The but core values. Right, but the core value system, I think, really needs to be there. You guys need to be all in on the big things together, especially if you're bringing in children into the Mm -hmm. household and how you raise them. Um, Things can go south, I think, pretty quickly if you guys are moving apart on the big things. Mm -hmm. For sure. I don't know, maybe that makes sense. I concur, sir. Second part of the question, how do you grow together and not apart as the years go by? I feel like that was, didn't we answer that? I don't know. How do you we keep it light. You got to keep it fun. You got to have be able to laugh together, um, and you got to include each other in those. You got to, but the grammar there is poor. But you <laughs> you really should include each other in. You don't have to share each other's hobbies. Oop, camera's not focusing. There we Sorry. Go. You don't have to share each other's hobbies. You know, do you, like you don't have to suddenly decide you like golfing and or whatever. I mean, That's I don't know point. what your hobbies are. That's it a doesn't good have point. to be that, but. Things that you find your passions will change, your interests will, gosh dang it, if the other person, they're going to change too, but like, can you take each other along in some way in those things? Again, it doesn't have to be that you feel exactly the same. Passions, interests will change for each of you, but can you find some way to bring each other along in those things? Doesn't mean you have to participate in each other's things, but can you care about something in some way because they care about it Mm -hmm. in some way? You know, I don't, not really big on fishing, but CR likes fishing, so. But you support me. I support you in your my attempts. Not, yeah, I was about at to say fishing. it's not even fishing at this point. It's laughable, but. <sighs> and you support me in my attempts at growing things, food and flowers right. and stuff like that. So, you know, I don't know. Just I don't really know how to explain it without mm. sounding mean. But like, <laughs> what? 
Well, I just think that sometimes people are like, well, we changed and we grew apart. And I mean, sure, I guess, but like you should change. So if you got married with the expectation that you were both going to stay the same for the next 50 years, that was probably a dumb idea. (laughs) So maybe acknowledge that, yep, we change. But so long as we share core values, appreciate each other, uh, bring each other along and don't, you know, just completely forget about the person because you found something else shinier and more interesting. That's all, I guess. Okay. All right. Came out kind of aggressive, and I really didn't mean. I for think it you're, to. you're well. You're irritated with the camera right I am. now. So I'm you, sorry. You I'm not irritated with you guys. These, on the these poor people right here. I had to scratch. I want my you butt. all to have wonderful long marriages. <laughs> Lottie, so many Lottie. questions, yeah, comments, messages, here. DMs, phone calls, owls dropping things off. DHL at FedEx mess. I mean, just I have received copious inquiries she about tastes, where t- Lottie the goat is. She tasted great. As if we, as if we have skewered her and served her to our children. She's here. She's very much alive and well. She's in the barnyard now because we finally found a solution. So many of you were like, I love all your pretty flowers, but how are they still here? Because you all know that Lottie <laughs> destroys. But CR finally figured out after much trial and error. Oof, man, she is a smart little cookie. And she is, um, she doesn't give up. She's like a little goat that could. And I had to sit there and like stake out and watch all of her, all of her exit points from the barnyard and study her. I mean, it was, it was a couple week trial and error scenario. (laughs) I ended up just raising a portion of the fence near each one of the gates to keep her in. So she was using, she was using like one of the inside boards to like catch her feet and then using the space between the, the gate and the fence to get her belly, to get her through. belly through. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, basically had to raise the, the fence line in those areas by like what, two, three feet, two, three feet. Yeah. So just some, and then so a couple far of deterrents in the gaps. It's worked. Um, it's really important that she stays in there at this point because we have. She got sick from eating something that she wasn't supposed to. We don't know what she got into. She had explosive diarrhea. She was blowing you, goat you, chunks you, all over our porches. Don't great, Dad. Don't graze over that. Explosive. When I like, t- imagine Dexter taking a water style. balloon full of poop and psst, psst. throwing yeah. it, and then that was like goat poop is really just pellets, and they're yeah. hard and. Anyways, so normally she ate something. We had vets come out. We had some dewormers applied. She got healthy. We quarantined her while she was during in the quarantine um, time frame. I fixed the fence and we began the testing phase. Yep, and we that's right. It was like the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park, where it's like they test the different areas of the fence and they figure out you know how to escape that was Lottie she was just testing different areas so we got her she won several battles we won I have won the war we won yeah she's been in there for a good month or two now so like we feel pretty confident and she seems to have gone back with the the herd a bit she's laying with the other goats again when she first went back in there she was staying completely separated from them like look I'm only here temporarily I'm better than you guys and I'm not even going to pretend like I'm a goat and lay down with you like I'm just I'm just biding my time in this prison cell till I get out of here and then finally she realized she couldn't tunnel her way out and uh, she you know made amends with that and decided to integrate with the population and now she's now she's thriving. Yeah, it was funny too because the what kind of goats? She's are, not as fat. The long-eared goats. What are the those Nubians. The Nubians. When back in the day, when when Lottie would escape, the Nubians were still almost like babies, and so they were like her size for the most part. Now they are much. Bigger. Now they are way bigger than her, mm-hmm. and it's just a completely different dynamic. So I think her her place in the hierarchy of the goat ecosystem has been knocked down a I don't even know that she was ever in the hierarchy. Um, I don't think she even sees herself as a goat or it's, did it's previously. Highly, it's highly possible, but, but she's but been she's, great. she's been humbled a little bit, um, but she's still the same old Lottie. She's still super fun. Every time we go in the barnyard, um, she'll come up and hang out mm-hmm. and loves people yep. still. So. Yep. It's just important for her own health and safety that she not be allowed to wander the property. And there's just no really in between for her. It's not That's not really fair yeah. for her because then every day is like, but why can't I be out with people today? Uh, So we just, it has to be consistent. Like come out with the other goats when we let them out occasionally, but on the whole, you live here (laughs) as a goat with the goats. Boom. How in the heck do you find the energy to take care of- Wait, 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 you didn't read that right. So how in the heck, heck, heek? Is the heck 
Do you find the energy to take care of so many children and animals? I would have a constant panic attacks because I would feel so responsible and fearful to forget someone or something. Mm-hmm. Also, how do you find me time? Um, so the first question is, how do we find the time to take it? Well, again, there's, you know, two of us here, two adults. We have a large age span of children, so that helps uh, it's as far as responsibility, chores. It's not like Christopher and I are doing every little thing by ourselves. That doesn't go away, by the way. Like, I still have those worries and concerns that we're going to forget something or, uh, you know, not the kids as much. <laughs> we're, we're pretty good now at, at knowing where what the kids are doing. <laughs> but the animals, you know, there's it, it does get stressful. There are times when the duck incident happened where I was literally just beside myself and Mm. why did we do this we should just why did we ever even move here i mean i was going down the dark rabbit hole (laughs) and it wasn't fun so it's you know we have those moments and times for sure that we're like good grief this is a lot especially off more than we can chew especially when you don't feel good or other life things are happening yeah the animals don't care they don't care if your grandma died they don't care if you're sick and Mm -hmm. you have you know the coof or whatever like they just want to eat and want a clean place to sleep and their safety and what they're used to so it is a it is a great responsibility but i think it comes with far more benefits and rewards than um than challenges i've never been people who kind of just enjoy sitting around or yeah no I don't, idle I don't being idle is boor- right. it's boring for both of us right. we need stuff to do and so at times to your point it comes that comes with um its downside sometimes we do get ourselves into things that it mm-hmm. seems like everything's happening at the same time and it gets a little chaotic but keeping a positive mentality and knowing that there's always kind of this light at the end of the tunnel we will get through it um definitely helps um from a prioritization standpoint just basic routine stuff we're pretty much on the same page with the stuff that needs to get done i mean you and i will we'll talk pretty much every morning and say okay what's what's on the list today so what's on the what's on the agenda what's on the calendar who has doctor's appointments who has taekwondo what's going you know what i mean so um we keep each other abreast of what's going on R- routines the and schedules and the last thing i would say on this and i've i feel like i've spoken about this before somewhere in a video i just can't remember where is that i think the other thing that must be kept in mind is that everyone has a different capacity we all have different capacities for different things mm. there are things that i watch other moms do that i'm like i could never such as getting up every single morning getting my kids up and dressed breakfast out the door, homework, to be at school by 7.30 a.m., sitting in the car line day in and day out, remembering all the dress-up days and got us into dollar for this. That was like, I did not have the capacity for that the one year that two of our kids went to public school. So our capacities for things are different. So you might look at what we do and think, I couldn't do that, but I probably would feel the same about what you do or where Mm. you live or how, because our our capacities for things are just different. So um, I, I think you also like anything else is like a muscle the more you do things the more you get used to it the more it becomes habit the less you think about it you just know that this is what i do every morning and it doesn't pass through your brain to think of it as boy this is difficult or hard you're just this is what i do you don't give yourself the option to not do it Mm -hmm. really it doesn't enter them into the the decision making process so to speak folks how do you find me time it looks different i would say like what (laughs) you would characterize as me time is working in your garden so the optics behind that look like you're doing work like you're out in the garden well, I am. doing tr- <laughs> you know what i mean though it's, but that's mm-hmm. like if you had two hours to do whatever you wanted that's something that you would choose yeah right well, so that looks different from the outside compared to what you would call me time i think again how are you defining me time what does right. that yeah what does that look like for you if for you that looks like going and getting a coffee and a pedicure no, I don't do that ever. One, don't touch my freaking feet with those things. You know, they, I just, no. But two, that's, you know, the things I used to enjoy, I don't as enjoy as much anymore. And mm-hmm. things, like you said, like gardening and doing stuff like that is is part of my me time. Sometimes it's just part of what has to be done or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We communicate. So you go fishing. I um, fish. I want, if I want to go to the gym. I want to go just out. So I like getting in the car sometimes and throwing a couple kids in. 
Well, getting, I, I enjoy going out and getting a coffee sometimes. Yeah, you do that. So. I don't really do that, but you do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. We both have kind of different, different things. But the again, it kind of, this kind of harkens back to the last answer is that we don't, our life is different here than it was in North Carolina. So we're not like, you're not going out after work with people that you work with and having a drink. I'm not going right. out with girlfriends for lunch or Mexican food on Wednesday nights. We're not doing those things. So uh, we find our our solitude in little moments throughout mm-hmm. nearly every day. So we don't plan out, okay, well, Wednesday is my me time. It's just a here's a moment during the day that I can yeah. – um, they would love to see your That's beautiful it. face. Sorry. Here's a moment during the day that I can grab a little bit of time to myself. Um, mm-hmm. And it kind of all falls in line with that whole idea of like building a life you don't need to escape from. That's kind mm, of our good. goal is our me time is also just, it kind of just is in harmony with our life that there's, mm. just, even if it's just taking a little walk around the property at sunset. Taking, um, taking 15 minutes on the throne. You know what I'm saying? It's me time. God. No? I'm maybe, leaving maybe, that maybe in. I'm not tw- editing maybe, that maybe out. Maybe 20 minutes? It's where you do your best thinking? Depend, depends on the phase. Let's not let's not do that. Let's go to the next question. <laughs> Here's my question. What is your vision when completed? More animals, more children, final vision for the house. I'd love to hear oh, what you man. say here. You know, I I am so bad at like creative decisions when it comes to bedrooms or houses or I I'm really more of just the <laughs> the executioner. That's probably the wrong word. The I don't think like, you, give me your plan. You I, I like the doing things, part not... of it. I am, and you can attest to this, I am just so bad at seeing a vision for what something <laughs> could be. I'll fully admit that. I do want some more animals, I think, like a donkey or maybe a cow. I kind of want some more llamas, but not right not right now, just yet. This is um, news to me, you guys. Yeah, over time. But I, we don't have the space for it, so I'm thinking long-term. I think for the long-term vision, I would love a pool on the property at some point where that falls in the priority See my eye twitching? The list of priorities, um, that's that's down there a little bit until some of the younger kids get older. We'll move it up, maybe a a peg or two. Um, So low that you can't even see it. There's there's so much we we talk about doing where it falls in the list of priorities and reality based on finances and stuff like that. We're not in a hurry. That's what's nice is like, here's some stuff that would be cool if we could do. Right now, is it- what it looks like, I, I don't know. Where these things are going to go, I, ha- I have no idea. That's what she's for. Yeah, she does all that 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 fun stuff. Okay, my answer to that would be <laughs> final. You're like, vision. let me pull out my ledger. <laughs> no, my answer to that would be final vision. Who knows everything? Mm. Whenever I try to say this is the end point, this is where, this is what it's going to be. It is never that, ever, ever, ever. It's difficult to feel like you're always kind of living in that flux space. We have so many ideas, not only of what we want things to look like visually, but how we want to utilize the property, how we want Mm. to, uh, you know, what what we want to do with it beyond just living here. So there's so much that's up in the air, and it will literally incapacitate me if I tried to sit down and answer that question for you because I would ha- I would have like an existential crisis and yeah. be in here for days being just locked in something and- is very difficult for for us as well like if we say well this that's is not what- really true you would yeah. love that well you'd kind of love it if we I, set I, a plan I li- and just did that. yes okay yes there is yes there is I a on the other that hand that. would um, lose it so maintaining flexibility mm-hmm. just one while, foot in front of the other while still you know, getting stuff done. That's a that's a tightrope that we walk pretty regularly. Oh yeah, we're really terrible at starting things and not finishing them. Though we are getting somewhat better, not that much. As far as more kids, I doubt it. But you know, again, you just never know what's going to happen. So I don't want to say that. But uh, you know, that's not something that we're like out there trying to make happen. Well, I mean, you know, you know, okay. <laughs> People are so disgusted with us. (laughs) Next one. How do you have the hard talks with your kids? Are you in charge of some? He's in charge of others. Have your kids experienced heartbreak in relationships yet? And if so, how as a parent did you handle that? So yes to we, we, I don't want to say we split discussions. Like I don't just 
have the, the important talks with the boys and you have them with the girls. Obviously, there are some that fall naturally into it makes more sense to do that, but not everything. With regards to like heartache, like more or less loss of life, loss of animal life, those like... Yeah, loss of That kind family. of heartache, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean... Nobody's had like a, a funeral. terrible breakup or anything. Yeah, no, <laughs> our kids not, are not in, young. not in that uh, not in that wheelhouse yeah. yet. Plus, I, I still don't... I still need to get a shotgun and a shovel and some lime. Um, can you write that on the to do list for me? I will. Thank I'll you. put it on there with cliche dad things. Hey, um, um, well, what I was going to say was we don't have like a predetermined. I'm going to talk to them about this, and you're going to talk to them about that. We both just are watching what's going on with our kids, and we have the conversations that are needed at the time, take Mm -hmm. the opportunities when they arise. Uh, If you're alone in the kids, in the car with the kids for a few hours on a road trip, something might, we might just hear something uh, on the radio or in a song, and Mm -hmm. it brings up a conversation. We just have them when we have them. Yeah, so I don't know. They just kind of happen naturally Mm -hmm. with life. Um, And take advantage. Like when your kids ask you questions, for those of you that are parents mm -hmm. out there, um, don't shy away from those conversations. Don't change the don't change the conversation. Um, take advantage of them because, especially as our oldest girls are getting older, um, they're asking bigger questions, like philosophically speaking, mm-hmm. and it's important. Those lead into more conversations, and it starts to build a level of trust between you and your kids. That hey, they can come to you, and you're mm-hmm. going to be honest with them. You're going to treat them like the young adults that they are. Um, and that's important that mm-hmm. laying that foundation is, is pretty critical. So the more they know that they can ask you, the more they will ask you. Yeah. Um, that's good. Yeah. So, all right. What you got next? What do I got next? Uh, my question is, what is the most challenging thing about owning a farm that you guys fort would be easiest or on the easier end of things? What's challenging yes. about owning a farm that you guys thought would be the easiest. Okay. okay so something that's hard that we thought would be easy is what okay. I take from that. I got mine. Okay, well, you go ahead then. So far, it has been growing grass. <laughs> Maintaining. People have like, grass in their yard. Yes. <laughs> well, it but is pasture much more grass. complicated um, out here with the amount of, of acreage that we have, being able to grow pastures for. I always say that word, and I have to like really say it, otherwise, it comes out as like pastures. Pastures? The pastures. Pastures? Yep, there you go. Um, <laughs> And then we have absolutely just like destroyed the the backyard area right off our back porch because we have so many people. It's just heavy traffic, mm-hmm. um, lack of water, extreme heat, like growing grass. I thought, I, I thought it was going to be a lot easier to maintain, and it's like yeah, the grass dang, is a real it? it's a real thorn in it your is. side. It is, and a lot of dads take pride in their grass, and I have just failed. Seems like an odd thing to take pride miserably. in. Oh, it is the the I know yeah, that scene is gets heated I pretty know. quick. I know, like you, they look at your mower. It's like whose mower is bigger? That kind of game. The thing that I thought <laughs> would be easier than it's turned out to be. Mm, I don't know. I think I think in general it would just be the proper and sufficient care of the animals that it feels like just when I think everybody's good, the kids are like, Mom, Tina's limping. Mom, there's a baby chick in the barnyard. Mom, the, the bird is not feeling well. I can just tell. It just looks like it's not feeling well. And I'm like, yeah. I, I, I mean, blah. it does feel like sometimes – it goes in these these periods where everything's fine, and then all of a sudden everything just, is not just fine. Zero it's to not 60. just yeah, it's not just like one animal. It's like it it's a cycle, and you get mm-hmm. into the the cycle of like difficult injury, hard, sad, whatever, and it just is like. Yeah. So that I I I can't say that I thought that that would be easier. I just was completely unaware that it was going to be like that. I figured every so often you'd have an incident happen. And it just, ooh, it's been tough for me to to accept that I cannot provide 100% guarantee to mm-hmm. these animals that they will all be okay and nobody will get hurt, nobody will die, nobody will have, a, a you know, something bad happen. And no matter how hard we try mother nature has Man, has her really own way and it's way. yeah it's brutal well that's life finds a way that's but Jurassic but mother Park nature things. will is brutal so <sighs> that's been a, a bit of a challenge for me to deal with is just the death of it all and the injury of it all questions for mexico i'm going 
I'm going to the Secrets Resort in Cabo later this summer. Do you need a converter plug for electronics? No. Negative. Uh, recommended packing sunscreen or buying it there? Pack. Pack it. I paid $22 for like a 10 ounce thing of sunscreen. I hated myself for it because all of yours smelled like pina coladas and all well, this what? stuff. And mine, I just wanted some like, just some, give me some banana boat, you know? Mm-hmm. Just Very mas- bana- banana masculine boat sunscreen. Pina coladas. Um, any excursions you think are worth it? How to best utilize all inclusive resort? Eat all the food, drink all the drinks. Um, <laughs> here's the here's what I think is real is the real conundrum, if you will, of all inclusive resorts. You have to wear a swimsuit ninety percent of the time, but yeah. also eat and drink as much as you want. Yeah, yeah. So if that kind of thing doesn't bother you, then you'll be fine. You'll love it. If you're like, I don't like feeling pregnant or bloated <laughs> or just in general, like, I mean, maybe bring an enema or some. <laughs> Uh, this is your red wagon. I, have no <laughs> I don't idea. remember what it's called. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Bring an extra bottle of probiotics with you okay. because good grief, the food is so good and you're going to want to eat is. it and you're going to want to drink all the things and yeah. you're going to feel like, but also do it anyways because you paid for it technically. So eat all the things. That's yeah. how you best utilize an all-inclusive. Excursion-wise, um, we are we, we're kind of history people. So for us, it was visiting like archaeological sites. If you're going to Cabo, I don't know yeah. where in Mexico is that. Is on yeah, that's, Baja that's the, side. That's the airport that we landed at. So it wasn't. Can that's very... Cancun. Oh, you're right. Look at that. Wait, what do I know about Mexico? Good yeah. Great. So we were like, I don't know. What's you, over Yucatan there. Peninsula, which. Man, I want to tell the story, but let's not. Boring. This is not okay. a podcast. Anyways, um, we liked all the like the Mayan ruin stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you have an opportunity to do that, wanted to do go to it. Chichen Itza, we didn't get to, but anything mm-hmm. like that, any kind of historical sites, you won't regret it. You won't regret seeing that <laughs> stuff in person. What are you laughing at? I got two sto- real quick stories. Can I tell them? I mean, sure, you can Let do whatever you want. We actually you can always edit them out. My wife and I them. love canceling plans. <laughs> Nothing that brings us more joy. Like than being just like, the rush uh-oh. of, not nah, we're bagging it. Like we literally had what, like a sailboat thing excursion it was a, it was a plan. Dinner. Yeah, it really wasn't our vibe. It wasn't our our. We we weren't really That's feeling it. That's not true. It. We were very excited about going on the boat until we got to the waiting area and saw the other and interacted <laughs> with the other folks that were going to be on it with us. And we are nice people and we like people, but there was just something we didn't about want to people. The, de- the the comments that these people yeah. were making and stuff that we were like, uh, we kind of looked at each other. And we're like, I don't know if I can do three hours on a boat with these people. <laughs> I just don't know. And I looked at him and I said, I'm OK if you want to just cancel and go get dinner inside the resort. The guys there with the clipboard. We just kind of like, looked Where at are each you other going, and we just, we just got up and left. <laughs> And I mean, I just was like, "This is great." It was you awesome. were you were in, invigorated. Loved would it. be the word. Just had a little. You little, felt like a real rebel yeah, breaking I plans mean, like that. Just big leagued it. It was so awesome. funny. You were pretty jazzed about that. The next story, or the next story, was apparently this is a thing. This is how old we're getting. The silent parties. Is it a thing? I've never heard of it before then. The silent disco. I read this on a list of available activities at this resort we stayed at. I'm like, I have to see what this is. I, I had to understand what was going on at the silent disco. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. One would deduce that it was silent and there was a disco, but there's more to it. I walked in, I opened the door and it was like, it was like a club or a bar. But no, no music. Zero music. Everybody's wearing headphones. The hostess person comes up to me and goes, um, hey, do you want to join us? And I'm like, what's happening? And they're like, well, they all have headsets on and they're all listening to different DJs. Their own that are, music. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever they want. So somebody without headphones, just complete silence, just people kind of talking and doing their whip and nae nae and the, whatever the other dances are. Um, but to an observer, I'm like, these people are, these. this is craziness. And she goes, do you want to join us? And I said, absolutely not. And I turned around and left. You were it, very pleased with It wasn't yourself. my scene, but. A silent disco. But everybody's, I can imagine from a distance, it just looks awful. Everyone's listening to different music, which means everyone's mm-hmm. dancing on a different beat. Oh, man. Could, yeah, that's a good point. So, I don't know. Anyways, anyways this is, yeah. okay, Mexico. next question. Enjoy, Mexico. Your, enjoy your vacation. Yes, May fun. you do all the things. Um, or do nothing, because we did that the first time we went, and it was glorious. Was beautiful. Um, have the llamas ever spat on you? Not me. 
um, yeah, and I think we caught it on a vlog one time. It was in my direction. I think it was the, one of the llamas spitting eye. at the other llama, and I took the shrapnel from it. You were in so. the you were in the the you got caught in the crossfire. That's right. Why is Tina in a separate coop? We already answered that. What do you enjoy to or what do you enjoy doing to unwind? I feel like did we answer that one or no? Yes. Um, un mm. unwind. I mean, Gosh, I like to take hard. a bath. <clears throat> okay. But that's mostly usually because my back hurts. <laughs> That's the truth. It's not really about unwinding. It's about releasing the tension in my back. Well, now your fingers are going to hurt. I just pulled two weeks landscaping duty. Name the movie. Which I already did. What do you enjoy doing to unwind? I just read that one. I like to fish. I go fishing with my father-in-law and the boys. And Millie has expressed interest in going fishing. I'm going to take her to the pond. Um, I no, want... there's alligators. There's alligators in our local pond, and he thinks he's... They put in a beach access for kids to swim in this pond, and then we find out that there are gators. There was one gator. So I, I... One... Where there is one gator, there are more gators. Okay? And no. Just no. No. What's your favorite Journey song? I love this question. Don't Stop believing. probably. Sure. That feels like a good answer. I mean... I'm more of a Boston fan over Journey. How many cups of coffee have you had so far? In that video, who's who knows? He drinks way more coffee than I do. I, I just want to put that out there. I feel like maybe there's been a misconception over the years. Y'all have believed lies about things. <laughs> you know, it's been, you have been hiding Ooh, your coffee are... intake for years, making the internet believe that you're just naturally Listen. perky and peppy. It's not true. He drinks gallons of coffee. Gallons. Well, that's a little hyperbolic. Um, I, I would, would never pint, I would say pints. be hyperbolic ever. I would say pints, maybe. I used to, it used to be a lot worse than it is now. When How many I used cups of work, coffee would you say you drink a day? Now, probably three. <laughs> and that's realistic, seriously. You are full of it. Yeah, I would say three. But now, granted, that's all before like nine o'clock. But you drink coffee after that. Sometimes, not uh, on average, I would say three. What do you drink to the rest four. of the day? Tea. I drink a lot of that that half and half tea. It's unhealthy. Two to three cups of coffee a day for apparently both of us because that's three. usually what I have is about two. Sometimes three if I'm really dragon tail. I'll fully commit to three, and it's probably on the the higher side of that. On Somewhere average. between three to five. All right, Kay. five to ten. We're, we'll say four. We'll go. We'll maybe we'll say we'll. I'll give you four. Okay. Maybe four and a half. <laughs> Are you going to breed the pigs? No. Nope. <laughs> did you always want a farm and a lot of children yes and no i, I always wanted to live on a farm since i was I would, a teenager yeah, i would say no to the farm for me um lots of children i mean that's but lots is a is a i mean the land and stuff you you've wanted that for a year i mean yeah within the first few years of so our marriage we always is very that, that's a okay, large right, i didn't fine. i have not oh, i did sorry, not grow right. up dreaming of having a farm no. i'm sorry i wanted to be a baseball player and I wanted you to be a baseball player. That too. didn't pan out. <laughs> now look at us. Now look at my back hurts. Lots of right. kids. I would say we've always wanted a big family. So I don't know what lots like lots. Well, is, we, had a, we had a lot, different three idea is of what lot. a big family yeah, was. Three is lots to some. Uh, so that's it. That's that that's, it? that's all I had. I will. Wow. Look at how pale your legs are. Yeah. You're super tan. So, farmer's tan. The upper half is tan. The lower half has okay. self tanner on. It is almost Taekwondo time. We need to wrap this up. All right. The boys are going to Taekwondo. I am. Then they're going, well. We're working on my back kick. Then they're going to the movies with their grandmother. So that's it. I think that's it. Hey, thanks for the questions. Yeah, thanks this for was the fun. questions. It's that nice was seeing you guys again. You yeah, know? you haven't been in videos. No, People think I've, been, I've got you wrapped no, up in the basement. Doing things. I'm, I'm. With a ball gag. Oh, my goodness. Speak the of children one of the are pacing. Right there. Look at them. They're pacing They're around sort of, it's the like cabin. The Alamo. It's like the Alamo right now. It's not what I want to do. Yeah. Okay. yeah. They're, they're, they're circling us like turkey vultures. Hey, this was fun. Was it? Um, I'll see you on the flip side. See you on the flippity flip. That's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for the questions. We will see you again very soon. Bye. You guys say bye, you just gonna smile. Shame, think something new under the sun.